McWhorter Custom Rifles presents... On this week's show, folks, Blondie and I are back in Oklahoma. Over the years, we've taken some great bucks out there. I'm up first this year with a 45 XML, late October, pre-rut hunt, and then it's all up to Blondie over the Thanksgiving break for the rifle opener. You don't want to miss this. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by McWhorter Custom Rifles, McMillan Fiberglass Stocks, Swarovski Optique, and Barber Creek Shooting Academy. Well, it's late October, two days before Oklahoma muzzleloader season starts Saturday. And uh, Denise and I are headed out there with the 45 XMLs. I've already shot hers, and she's good out to 500, so she got no excuses. So I'm just going to load mine. I shot it the other day, but I'm going to load it and make sure I don't have any excuses. Put my smokeless charge in there. Seat my 325 grain Pittman bullet. That on my loaded mark. All right, stick my rod back in my gun. Then we'll arm it with the ignition cartridge and we'll be ready to see if this was right where I left it and I hope it is. This is a gun I've been shooting the last couple of weeks. It's a, built on a board and single shot action with a Brux. Uh, one in 20 twist, 27 inch barrel. It's got a Hawkins three port uh, per side brake on it. Uh, again, this is in our Apex LR stock made exclusively for us by McMillan. Trigger Tech triggers about a pound and a half on this one and got a Swarovski Z8i and a 2.3 to 18 by 56. That's a great scope for, uh, for muzzleloader hunting. We got a yardage turret cut for the elevation and temperature we're expecting out there. So let's see if it's where it needs to be. Right in the dot. Well, I think we're ready to go. Those big bucks in Oklahoma might be in trouble. So Oklahoma has quickly become one of my favorite Midwestern states to hunt. And this is about the third year in a row that Denise and I have hunted with uh, Larry Ellis, EWA Outfitting, and Dane Drake, uh, Legends of the Cimarron. They've got some great grand, vast amounts of uh, managed land out there, and just a great place to kill one of these big Oklahoma whitetails. The Oklahoma muzzleloader season falls the last part of October, which is sometimes really good. If you get good weather, the bucks are already feeling real ruddy and they're still patternable. They hadn't really left their uh, home areas a lot. So if you got pictures of them, you got some good recon on them, usually you can get on them in a couple of days. This part of Oklahoma, it's just rolling hills. A lot of sage grass, not a whole lot of timber. Uh, most of the area that we're hunting is right up off a river. Sometimes we'll hunt down in the river corridor itself, but mostly it's up in the uplands in the bedding areas because the deer usually tend to bed back in the sand hills or in some of these coolies. For this year, Larry and Dana really done their homework. They had located several big shooter bucks. One in particular was a big mainframe five by five, long twos and threes and fours, good beams. And this was the bug that I was gonna focus on for this year's muzzleloader hunt.
So my cameraman Russell and I, we're all pumped for the first day. Denise is not there yet, so we got it all to ourselves. And uh, we get in our blind way before daylight. And as soon as the light cracks, we start seeing deer. Several good bucks, and one in particular really caught our eye, a three-year-old that he come through there pretty quick. He might have got shot because this deer was pushing 160, long eight-inch brow tines, good frame. He looked very similar to the, the deer we were hunting, but it wasn't him, not quite as much mass, but one that we'll certainly be after next year. I'm tasting the pat knees. They're very, very scientific. It's a pair of foot socks with a hot hands body warmer stuck in there, but I will say I might throw my heavy boots away because I feel like I'm sitting in my living room. Boy, this is nice. 1-800-TOES-WARM. Warm toes, call me. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Revolution Safe Company. They inspired by Pendleton, rotating gun management made simple. We hunt this area because the wind's right every day. We've had several good days. We've seen some good bucks, but not our target buck. And Denise finally shows up, so I lose my cameraman. He's got to go film Denise, so I'm left to film by myself on day five. Day five, I get in the blind well before daylight get everything opened up, get the camera positioned right, get my 45 XML up on the sticks, and see a lot of deer uh, leaving the food area, going back to the river, a couple of decent bucks, and then some does bolt out. And they catch my attention because I know something's chasing them because it's, it's late, late October now and the rut's getting started. So I, I see antler tips, I look at the buck with my Swarovskis, and this is our target buck, big, Big five by five, long fours, long tines, long beams, got everything. He's chasing these does and at about 350, he stops just for a few seconds and I get the camera focused, get the gun ready and just as I flip the safety off, he takes off chasing these does. And I find him again, get right to the point of pulling the trigger and he takes off running because he's this one doe has already come into Astra. she's hot and he's just going to chase her until he catches her so they're running then i start panicking a little bit the camera's going all over the place gun's going all over the place i'm having to get completely left justified in the blind and unfortunately without a cameraman i had the camera in the wrong spot Deer stopped for me at 245 yards. I center punched him. He went down immediately. I had my target buck, but I didn't have the footage. So, yay me, boo me. Well, folks, I suck as a cameraman. <laughs> I don't know if I got that or not. These ladies brought him, brought him in front of me and the uh, 45 XML did the job. And, uh, as you can tell, I was in a very awkward shooting position. This, this blind's got so many blind spots in it that in order to get the camera down there where I anticipated getting the shot, I had to get way over this way and get in a real cramped shooting position. But uh, I think I made a good shot and I saw him go down right there. <laughs> Well, here's my Oklahoma buck I've been hunting all week long, and uh, Russell was hunting with me up until Denise got here, and he was for her this morning filming her, so I did the best I could, and uh, he's here now, so we got some good camera work now, but it's a little too late because I don't think I got the kill uh, on tape. Uh, we let the 45 XML eat, uh, and it, as you can see, it tore him up, and it tore me up too. I was 
all the way to the left of the blind and had the gun in just so I could make the shot, trying to get the camera on him and uh, didn't get a good shoulder weld on it and it bit me pretty good, but uh, about 235 yards just annihilated him and annihilated me too. So what a great trophy deer. Just, just uh, legends of the Cimarron Outfitters, Dane Drake. Larry hooked us up with Dane this week and uh, Dane's fed us good and taken care of us. And uh, that's the Oklahoma hunt in the books. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Extreme Wildlife Adventures, Hoff Power Auto and Outdoor Stores, Surge Pro by Biofac Crop Care, and Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. All right, James at Barber Creek Long Range Shooting School. We're going to talk about barrel twists and why it's important for a long range hunting rifle. Uh, the biggest thing is understanding that twist rate is designed to stabilize a bullet basically by length, sectional density, weight, and the type of bullet that it is. The further you get out, the more unstable the bullet can be. Just because you're shooting quarter inch or half inch groups at 100 yards does not mean that it's going to go all the way out to 1,000 yards and you're going to be shooting 2.5 inch groups at 1,000 yards. That bullet can become unstable due to the twist rate of your barrel. This is a one in eight twist barrel on this 6.5 Creedmoor, which means that for every eight inches of the barrel, the bullet does one full rotation. Now that bullet's gonna leave that barrel at about 275,000 revolutions per minute, which is gonna help keep it stable during its flight path. If your gun shoots really good at 100 yards and you get out to six, seven, eight, 900 yards, 1100 yards, and you're starting to open up your groups, it may not be your bullet or your powder charge. It could very well that you don't have the right twist rate. Now, luckily, most professional gun make makers are going to understand that. They're gonna get the right barrel for the right caliber and the right bullet, and that's going to stabilize your bullet at long range. But barrel twist is very important. If you don't know what your barrel twist is, you bought a gun, you've had it for 10 years or five years, you bought it from a manufacturer that didn't tell you what it is and you can't get the information from them, it's pretty easy. Take a cleaning rod, run it down the barrel from the front of the barrel to the back of the gun all the way till it stops with a nylon brush on it. Pull it back until the brush engages the rifling. Take a piece of tape and put it right up against the muzzle and put a little flag on it. Start pulling the cleaning rod back, make sure the cleaning rod has a rotating handle on it, until the flag does one full rotation and measure from the back of the flag to the front of the barrel and you'll see if it's an eight twist or eight and a half or nine twist or 10 twist. That's one simple way to do it. It's not the best way, but at least it gives you a pretty good idea what your barrel twist is. Barrel twist is really important. One last thing about barrel twist, all North American barrels are right hand twist barrels for the most part. Because of that, the bullet is going to have something called spin drift, which we'll cover in another video. But the other thing is revolutions per minute. Bullet manufacturers are going to tell you if they should tell you, I know Berger does, that if you're over 300,000 revolutions per minute using what's called a cup and core bullet, in other words, lead core copper jacket, that the jacket can start to separate from the lead core if you're over 300,000 revolutions per minute. So we got to keep that in mind, especially for hunting because a lot of times then the bullet can basically what they call blow up on the shoulder, where the jacket can separate from the lead core, the lead goes in, but the jacket stays outside or it doesn't penetrate as deep. So try to keep those revolutions under 300,000 revolutions per minute. It's real simple to do. You just basically go into your calculator and then there's a calculation for it. So once you get into your, your calculator, if I can find it, there we go. And the calculation is your muzzle velocity. Let's say this gun is, what is this gun running, Alan? So 2960 feet per second times 720 divided by twist rate, which is eight. This bullet is 266,400 revolutions per minute. We're well under 300,000. Hey, that's another downrange shooting tip from James at Barber Creek. Thanks for joining us. Oklahoma muzzleloader season was a bust for me, but I couldn't wait to get back out here for rifle season. We've been watching this giant 10 point on trail camera. I am too excited to get another opportunity at him. Uh, we're sitting down looking over 
really thick hardwoods and cedars. It just looks like a great deer killing spot. In no time, I look up and my target buck is standing at the feeder. And I wait and I'm waiting for that perfect broadside shot. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Borton Accuracy, Trigger Tech, Brooks Barrels, Capstone Precision Group, Hawkins Precision, and Revolution Safe Company. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Real Texas Barbecue. In no time, I look up and my target buck is standing at the feeder. I'm gonna let him try to turn broadside. We go back and we look at the footage of this kill shot and I could not have made a more perfect broadside 10 ringer shot on a string of barbed wire ever. How unlucky can I be? We couldn't find any evidence that this deer had been wounded whatsoever. And all we could do was wait it out. I'm gonna lick my wounds that night, dream about that shot, and dream about that deer, and get up the next day and try it again. We go back out the next morning just to give it one more look to see if there's any evidence that this deer might have been wounded. And we check the trail camera, and this dude is on trail camera eating corn 30 minutes after all this went down the night before. Renewed hope. Now it's just a matter of time. I'm wanting to get in the blind right then and not get out of it until it gets dark. It's my last set here in Oklahoma and the winds have gone up really high again. Right now we've got 40 something mile an hour gusts and that's just what we have to deal with. So just hoping we've got the 6.5 Weatherby is ready to go. Gonna give it one last try before we head home. I'm feeling a little anxious because this could be looking like my second Oklahoma hunt without filling a tag. But the last hour of the last hunt, look up and we've got two or three bucks walking into view and one of them is my buck. So we've got my buck standing out there, walking with these two other bucks. It gets a little hectic because Alan and I have a little, little miscommunication because I'm looking at one of the bucks trying to make sure it's him and he's got the target buck in camera. And we get all that settled out and I pull the trigger and all this chaos, I had not loaded a bullet in my gun. Basically, it's now or never. He's very alert. He turns to go away. It's, it's do or die at this point, and I want him to die. After 10 days total hunting Oklahoma, 
Alan's got a really nice bug. I've killed a barbed wire fence, but I've got this beautiful 10 point buck on the ground. And sometimes that's just the way it happens, but it turned out great. <laughs> I know a lot of critters get nicknamed Lucky, but he truly was until just a few minutes ago. 6'5 Weatherby with the 140 grain burger, Trotsky on top, McMillan stock, board in action, Trigger Tech Trigger, and Denise. And Denise. Got this buck dead. Good that job, is. baby.